you know, there is just so much to think about all at once. Let me tell you, it can get exhausting. Sometimes I just need space for myself, be alone. There's so many bodies around me that I think, you know what? I want to watch a movie. Certainly not. Hi, welcome to the Taco Shack. If you didn't notice, there's an apocalypse going on. Don't get hit by a meteor. There will be many hazards and hungry customers out there. Things can get a bit stale delivering tacos, but development studio Cherry Pie Games hope that an apocalypse will spice it up. Driving through the city streets, you have to dodge meteors, hurricanes, and even tsunamis, and eventually deliver tacos to awaiting customers. The term driving is used very loosely here. You can do impossible flips, jump in the air, and even grind on rails. It reminds a lot of the jumping cars in Rocket League. This silly concept can be shared between a maximum of four players, or racing to deliver their tacos first. Taco Apocalypse is a little loony, but not everything can be so serious. Not to mention tacos. Everybody loves tacos. Sometimes we have to deliver under different circumstances. I know how it looks. But no. This is not the end of my story. This is just the beginning. Exoplanet First Contact is like Red Dead Redemption set in space. A space cowboy wanders through the alien desert, trying to strike it rich and get off this godforsaken planet. The name of this backwater is Catharsis, a dying gold rush town. There are still riches to be found, but only in the dangerous outer reaches of the desert. To deal with this, our cowboy protagonist has a few tricks up his sleeve. He can gather items for crafting things such as guns, turrets, mining equipment and fences. He can also specialise in different skills, including shooting and charisma. He'll meet other folks along the way, but only a few of them will be trustworthy. It's a brutal world and when survival mode is turned on it just gets harsher, with rest, food and water becoming essential to survival. There are jobs for him to pick up, as well as quests to find. But if he ever leaves a trail of blood, he may just get a bit too notorious. Exoplanet First Contact is Cowboys and Aliens as a game. Dwarves are known for their combative and fearless nature. Even when outnumbered 100 to 1, they won't ever think of giving up. They'll use all of their skills, tactical options of their environment, and clever combos to resist their enemies. The Dwarves is a highly tactical RPG that puts Dwarves center stage. The Dwarven race usually plays a sideshow role in fantasy, but the aim here is to delve right to the bedrock of their culture. The Dwarves will be based off Marcus Heitz's novel of the same name. In fact, Heitz will be collaborating with the developers and writing extra quests. It's sure to result in a strong story and rich lore. There's just as much focus being given to the gameplay as well. The battles are epic setups that pit your few dwarves against an army of foes. These crowds are programmed to flock around your characters and respond to their actions, so you're always under fire. It's a new twist on an old genre and sure to make the dwarves stand out. Hi everybody, my name is Sven Wenke, I'm the creative director and founder at Laren Studios. And today I'm very proud to announce to you our return to Kickstarter with our new RPG, Divinity Original Sin 2. Divinity Original Sin was one of the great Kickstarter success stories of last year. Independent developer Larian Studios turned to the crowd to make the Divinity game they had always envisioned. And people loved it. It was our number 3 indie game of 2014 and generally agreed to be one of the best traditional CRPGs in years. It's only fitting that Larian returned to fund their sequel to Original Sin. The core of the game will be the same, but there are some bold new additions. Every character has an origin tale and different motives that will at times align and other times conflict. 
However, in your party of up to four, it's your decision that ultimately determines what your group will do, whether or not everyone is happy with it. Also, the other members can be controlled by friends in co-op. The list of other features goes on. The dialogue is deepened with more interaction options, there's skill crafting that combines skills and spells, and the narrative aims to be more serious whilst keeping its humour. There is a lot more to mention, but not enough time. The point is, Divinity Original Sin was a great old school RPG, and this sequel is getting considerable upgrades to take the series to the next level. So all of this results in a lot of gameplay, because you're continuously trying... Running from 1998 to 2001, Battle Chasers was a popular comic book series that combined Western and American art styles and featured a unique fantasy setting. Following on from that, series creator Joe Mad entered the video game industry and became the creative director of 2010's Darksiders. With some of his Darksiders colleagues, Joe is now turning his Battle Chasers into a Japanese style role playing game. It will serve as a companion story to the graphic novel so it will be welcoming to newcomers and add more detail for old fans. As a JRPG, the game will revolve around none other than turn-based combat. There will be dungeons to dive into, each one randomly generated and different every time. Joe will be involved in every character's design, making sure his creations come to life in 3D, and there are some awesome cutscenes with old school animations. It's exciting to see an old franchise from another medium resurrected in video game form. And more than that, Battle Chasers looks totally kick-ass. Thank you for watching, my name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh. We'll see you next time here on Indie Former.